Yeah, I mean, it is absolutely extraordinary um, getting a gauge on what the Italian establishment thinks is going to happen over the next month and a half, by which time in the middle of October they have to present a draft budget to the European Commission, which kind of fits in with the, with the programme of steady improvement. If it doesn't, uh, then there's going to be a new source of conflict between Brussels uh, and indeed Rome as well. But let's get another uh, eye on this as well from Jim McCocken, who is the CEO of Principal Global Investors. Uh, and Jim, we are hosted here by Valerio De Moli, who uh, we listened to a soundbite on Capital Connection just a second ago. Uh, and he was saying he thinks it's going to be OK. He thinks actually that TRIA will present a budget which is acceptable uh, to uh, not only Italian citizens, but also to the European Commission. Is that overly optimistic? It's probably not overly optimistic because I think there will be some sort of compromise to keep living with the European Union because the Italian population wants to stay there. Mm. They don't want to get into a sort of Brexit type of situation. Having said that, neither Deputy Prime Minister, who is the real power in Italy, it's Salvini and De Maio who are the real power in Italy, neither of them is very pro-Brussels, in fact quite the opposite. So I, I think they'll be looking for a budget that suits the Italian people bit more expansionary than perhaps Brussels would want them to have. So that will be difficult. A bit more expansionary. Well, I think that is the biggest understatement I've ever it heard you well say in the many years you and I have been <laughs> speaking. They want a flat tax. They want a yep. universal income. They do not want the Fornero reforms which were made under the technocratic Monti government from 2011. They don't want a VAT increase which is penciled in for next year as well. Um, I have a sneaky feeling that this is going to be many billions of euros over budget and many billions of euros over a 2% deficit level. Yeah, and I think Valerio will be right if they manage to fudge it for a while and just kick it on uh, to the next, uh, the next year and so on. I think, I think both Brussels and the Italian political parties will play a fairly long game here because yeah. I think they both feel fairly secure in their power position. Well, that's very so interesting. So that would be the positive. Are you sure they can play a long game? This is Italy, yeah. after all, yeah. as I'm well. I'm not sure. Uh, and, and looking at the, uh, the city copy, which was 100-odd pages, and I just piled through it as well, many people think the campaign mode that both Five Star and Lega are in will culminate uh, in a 2019 election before the likes of the PD and the establishment get their act together. That's a very good point. We have to be careful about what events will happen to derail any kind of positive outlook. And it's not just the political debates leading to a, an election, which could happen. It's also the state of the Italian banking system. The banking system in Italy remains quite undercapitalized. They didn't, Europe didn't go through the kind of recapitalization of the banks and the policies to get out of the financial crisis 10 years ago that the US did. And the Italian banks are one of the weak points. There are things that can go wrong here and the events could undermine it. How big a danger is Italy and its 2.3 trillion euro debt pile to the global economy? Let, let's expand this as well. Italy's got its own problems and they're working their own way through it in an Italian way as well. Is this a clear and present danger for the global economy? I think it's more of a big tail risk. I mean, an Italian exit from the EU, an Italian exit from the Euro would be a very, very painful event for the European and therefore world banking system. It could require the biggest bank recapitalization ever, bigger than the US in 2008. So there is that tail risk. I think it's most likely though, with public opinion in Italy being remaining pro-EU, so long as that stays, I think they're not going to get into that but kind of tension. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.